Hi everyone, uh, this is a recap on the granular style instrument we made last night in class. Um, so if you remember, this is we took a piece of audio, we pulled it into a sampler device, and we turned it into like a chromatic instrument. Uh, so, if you remember, the, the device we used for this was called Simpler. It is an instrument, so it lives in the instruments category, and there it is, Simpler. Simpler is the baby sister, I guess, of this sampler device, but for what we want... It's got all the functionality we need for this for this granular style instrument. So here it is, and the device is telling me drop sample here. So I'm going to command and tab uh, to I've got another video exporting to my finder window, um, and I've got the samples that we were working with last night open here. Obviously, you can go th to your sample uh, your browser sidebar here and look for samples if you want to. Um, I'm going to use uh, let's use the wood. So I'm going to click and drag this wood sample down into the simpler and let go. If things are lagging here, it's because I'm exporting another video and recording this one, so apologies if there's a little bit of kind of visual lag. Um, okay, this is the simpler, the sampler device, and if I record arm the track with a, with a sample, a piece of audio in there, I can play that. And it is chromatic. will increase in pitch um, as you play higher notes. Um, but that's not the effect I'm going for here. I want to create a brand new instrument sound from this um, piece of audio. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that the audio is unwarped. You might pull in a piece of audio and it will say that it's warped here. I'm going to unwarp. Um, and then I'm going to activate loop. The loop is the whole, um, you know, it's the foundation of why this works, this thing. Um, we're going to activate loop. And then um, we're going to isolate a specific playback region using the sample start and the sample sample end uh, markers here. I'm going to pull the end one all the way in, uh, and then I'm going to zoom. To zoom in a device in live, you hover uh, your cursor <clears throat> until you get a magnifying glass, and then you click and drag up and down. So I'm just getting a better view of this waveform here. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to move the sample start point as well. So we've got two flags, and we're going to contain or isolate a part of the audio that we want to use. Okay, and I'm just going to drag it back out. So you see, we can create loops like this. But the shorter the loop gets, the playback of that zone becomes so quick that we hear it as... A very clear pitch. I'm just going to turn this down a bit in case that's shredding anyone. Now let's do it here. Okay. Um, at this point, you might want to turn the snap off as well because this can um, this can restrict you a little bit when we're trying to isolate zones. However, yeah, that is the closest I can get. So that is the smallest playback region that I can have, and it does have a very clear pitch. It's a bit it's a bit high because the the playback zone is so small. And also, it doesn't really have any character either at that point. So I try not to work with the smallest region possible. But maybe sort of... We want to have some character of the sound. That's the whole point of this. Um, is being able to use physical materials like wood. And we're going to do another one with metal. Um, so that the, the, the synth sound that you've got has some sort of character to it. Some sort of kind of physical character to it, something tangible. I'm going to go a bit further with this. And I'm going to adjust the playback start point as well. And you'll notice the closer I get to the front, the kind of the sharper the attack seems. Cool. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, that's fine for now, we're going to do a few other things to this, but the next thing I'm going to do is uh, affect my uh, amplitude envelope. Two ways we can do this. We can do it straight from the front here on the device and really the only thing I want to do is increase my release time which gives it more of this kind of uh, natural e-piano sound. Now let's go a bit further. Okay now while that's on, while I've uh, kind of activated my release to be a bit longer and notice the release it just kind of keeps looping um, the sound the same way that if I, I had the key held. Okay. So I'm going to keep messing around with my loop point. I'm going to 
like it round here. And it's got this real mm, kind of texture to it that would be harder to synthesize um, using kind of conventional synthesis. This makes it a little bit easier to kind of instantly embed some character into your tone. Cool. I'm really quite happy with that now. The other thing we have to do at this point is to tune the instrument because right now, I mean, it's playing chromatically, but we don't know that this, the C note that I'm playing on my keyboard is actually a C note. What I mean is when I start bringing this into uh, sessions to play as an instrument, um, I need it to be in tune with the rest of the synthesized instruments. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. The most simple way really is to use the tuner instrument, uh, tuner device, the tuner audio effect. It's an audio effect. It lives here. Um, you can just drag it after your sampler device. And I'm going to play my notes. So I'm playing a C there and it's outputting. It's telling me that I'm actually playing an A. So I'm going to jump into my controls section on the sampler. And I'm going to adjust this transpose value until I get this uh, to a C. So it's telling me I'm playing a C sharp right now, so I'm going to come down one. Okay, so it's telling me I'm playing a C, but it's still red. It's still got a red indicator, which means that I'm a few cents out. And it's giving me the sense readout here. It's saying I'm like 30. Oh, I'm going to unfilter this. Why have I got it filtered? There we go. Man, I had the LFO wobbling. So yeah, I'm like 30.2 cents out. So I'm going to um, adjust my detune to minus 30. Can I do points? Yeah. So now the C that I'm playing on my keyboard is an actual C note, meaning that when I bring in uh, other synthesized instruments, this uh, instrument will be in tune. We can test this right now as well. I'm going to go up to instruments and bring in an operator. And we're going to play a C note on the operator. Still sounds a little bit out. But, um, yeah, if I drop this, because we're in a different octave. Damn, I'm not sure now. No, it is. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's just because we're hearing it in different octaves. Let's push the release out on my uh, uh, operator. Turn it down. Cool, it's definitely in tune. So yeah, the C that we got here is correct. And it's in tune with another instrument that's uh, got a very pure uh, note value, a sine wave. Wicked, it's in tune. Okay, cool. I've hoped this has helped as a kind of recap um, and have fun designing your own granular sounds. This is me signing out for this vid, so peace, peace, peace.